let's dive right in. This is another free asset, namely lithium cobalt oxide, one of the more commonly used materials in lithium ion batteries, and thus hopefully a useful figure for some people. There are some details of how this is modeled that I really want to touch on for how it works. Unlike the perovskite, which is a little bit simpler, lithium cobalt oxide is kind of funny because of the way that some of these things shift, and so to use this model effectively, there are just a few things you have to know. For starters, every array in here is using a constant offset. So if you're going to scale this, you cannot apply the scale and expect everything to work. All of the actual parameter distances are set by aspects of the crystal structure itself. So square root of two here, you have that as a distance. And similarly for the Y offset, you actually have a defined distance that corresponds to part of this unit cell. Because of how this is actually built, there's a little bit of a challenge in terms of getting these atoms here to match with this lattice. And though I've driven as much of this as I can, there are some customization problems. For instance, let's just come to a top view and turn into a wireframe. So you can actually see if I come into the lithium cobalt oxide collection, I have the cobalt oxide, and then I also have the lithium positions. Now these are all linked throughout, and they should really be the way that they are on this bottom side and on this right edge. They overhang a little bit here for the lattice, and they overhang at the top as well. Unfortunately, that's just part of using an array, and to improve the modularity of this, I wanted to keep that in place. So if you're going to actually be rendering this, you want to do it from this kind of angle where you're not going to see that back face or this side, because that's not entirely accurate. Ideally, you wouldn't have these atoms here or those atoms there. And what you could do, if you're happy with the way that it looks, is you could simply apply those arrays and then delete those positions so that you actually aren't going to have that overlap. But let's talk about how this is driven a little bit. When I say driven, what I mean is that the arrays for the cobalt oxide are actually going to control the arrays for the lithium positions. And you can see if I scale this down, it's actually matching the number of atoms, so it's going to keep up. Similarly, for the y direction, it's going to do that, and it'll actually add in that direction as well. And for the z direction, likewise, if you add, it will always create this intercalating layer of ions. And they are actually fitting into these sort of empty triangle vacancies where they ought to in that lattice. One of the things that is worth noting about the cobalt oxide is that there is this secondary array. And if you actually read the whole title, it says do not change. So essentially, this is a constant array. You don't want to change it. It just creates the initial offset. And we'll break down what's actually happening here. So I'm going to disable the Z array and the Y array, and we'll just hide the lithium positions for the time being. You can see this is the kind of offset here. And if we uncheck the offset array, you can see now we have just this simple edge. And if I were to just use this count, this is just controlling the number that I have here. If I come up to the offset array and add into this count, first visualizing it, you'll see it's gonna build in this direction. The reason I'm using two arrays here is I don't wanna build in this direction going off on diagonal, I want it to go straight up. So you keep this set at two, and then you use the Y axis array to simply grow out that set of two in this direction. And unfortunately, that's just kind of the way that I found that gives the nicest, cleanest structure consistently. In terms of the rest of this model, it is essentially very similar to all the others. There is a collection for all of the particle ions, so cobalt, lithium, and oxygen. Obviously, if you're using a similar crystal structure, just change the ion name to whatever you want it to be. The lithium positions fit in place like this. And again, they reflect the count of the Z axis array. If we hit Z and come into material preview, you can see, as with many of the other lattices, I've set it up so that the actual shapes here are using default glass. You can actually see right now there are not enough particles on this object because there are a few missing places. And so that's a good time to touch on some of these. There are respective particle systems for the oxygen atoms, which is what these blue ones would be, the cobalt ions or atoms. They should really be ions, not atoms, but I'm going to overlook that temporarily, and for the lithium as well. And again, these are all particle systems set up with hair and put in place on those base, mes base meshes. So let's go ahead, grab our cobalt atoms, or not our cobalt, the oxygen rather, and I'm just going to arbitrarily increase this number to a significantly high point where I'm going to see every position populated. Um, 4,000 should be more than sufficient. And now you can see I have all of these in place. So again, if you're going to change the size of this array drastically and make it much bigger, then what you're going to want to do is just make sure the particle count is enough that it's going to actually populate all those positions. If you don't want to show those positions, much like all the other models, you can simply hide those in both the viewport and the render. So there we go. 
And though you will notice that there are these little connecting lines, these are actually just wires. And so when you go ahead and render this, you're not actually going to see those wires. So don't worry if that's something that is a concern to you. Other than that, the only other thing to note is, of course, the cobalt ions, as per usual, are just subdivided cubes made into spheres, the lithium and oxygen ions similarly. They all have a subdivision of one in the viewport. I usually disable that just so that you can have all of these without slowing down the scene. And there are two in the renders. The materials are all very, very clearly labeled, but you can set them up however you want. Same with the lighting for the final rendered scene. So coming to render view, you can see this is just default camera and lighting. I usually leave this up to whoever wants to change it for the final version. But essentially that is the baseline summary of how you would interact with and use this model. So lithium cobalt oxide added to the arsenal. Hopefully this is useful to some people. If it is, then thanks for coming out. Consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. Share this with other people so that they can make use of these free assets. And until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.